This video is about Rule 64, Review of Judgments and Final Orders or Resolutions of the Comelec and the COA. Following the syllabus of the Supreme Court, ang sabi don, as far as Rule 64 is concerned, you study only the distinctions in the application of Rule 65 to judgments of the Comelec and COA and the application of Rule 65 to other tribunals, persons, and officers. So let's know now the difference between Rule 64 and 65. When you talk about Rule 64, remember your constitutional bodies. Ano ang sinabi ko? There are three constitutional bodies or constitutional commissions. That is your Civil Service Commission, your COA, and your COMELEC. But si Rule 64, it refers only to COA and COMELEC. So very limited ang application ni Rule 64. It only governs the judgments and final orders or resolutions issued by the COMELEC and COA. Take note here that these two constitutional commissions or constitutional bodies must be acting as quasi-judicial bodies. They must be acting as quasi-judicial bodies and the judgments or the final orders issued here must be rendered in bank, not in division, ha? rendered in bank. And of course, our basis is your Section 1 of Rule 64. How about your Rule 65? Is the application also very limited? Answer, no. Sa Rule 65, broad ang application yan, broad ang scope. In your Rule 65, you will be reviewing the acts of the tribunal, the board or officer exercising judicial function or quasi-judicial function. Our basis is Section 1 of Rule 65. Let's go now to the period. What is the period if you are going to file your petition under Rule 64? The period is 30 days. 30 days from when? From notice of the judgment. Your basis is your Section 3. Ano ang nakasulat dyan sa Section 3? The time to file petition. The petition shall be filed within 30 days from notice of the judgment. How about in your Rule 65? When is the period? Dinoble yan. That is times 2. So that is 60 days. The petition shall be filed not later than 60 days again from notice of the judgment basis. That is your Section 4 of your Rule 65. Next, where do you file the petition? In Rule 64, very exclusive yan that you will be filing it only with the Supreme Court. Basis is your Section 2. Ano ang sinasabi ni Section 2? It may be brought by the aggrieved party to the Supreme Court on certiorari under Rule 65. How about your Rule 65? Where do you file your petition for certiorari, prohibition, and mandamus? Answer, it depends. So it can either be in the RTC, in the Court of Appeals, in the Sandigan Bayan, or in the COMELEC. Depende yan, meron yang mga qualifications. Another difference is the MR or your motion for reconsideration. Can you file a motion for reconsideration under Rule 64? Answer is if it is allowed by the rules of the commission, then you can file a motion for recon. Very clear yan under Section 3 of Rule 64. Ano ang sinasabi dyan? The filing of a motion for new trial or reconsideration of the judgment or final order or resolution if allowed under the procedural rules of the commission concerned. How about in Rule 65? Can you file a motion for reconsideration? Answer, that is a requirement. The general rule is you have to file an MR unless papaso ka dun sa exceptions. Again, the motion for reconsideration is a condition sine qua non before you can file your petition for prohibition, certiorari, and mandamus. Under Rule 64, if you are going to file your motion for reconsideration and that is denied, what will you do next? You file your petition. And when are you going to file your petition? Within the remaining period. So if you filed your motion for reconsideration on the 27th day, kasi binibigyan ka naman ng 30 days, 
to file your petition but instead you opted to file a motion for reconsideration so, so you filed your motion for reconsideration on the 27th day that means to say that you only have the remaining period or the period of three days to file your petition but ano ang sinasabi ng batas you have five days or it shall not be less than five days in any event reckoned from notice of denial. So instead of having three days, you now have five days to file your petition. So in your Rule 64, mas maiksi ang period dyan if you file your motion for reconsideration. That is clear under Section 3 of your Rule 64. How about in Rule 65? That is not the case. Mahaba ang period dyan. In case you file your motion for reconsideration and that is denied, you now have another 60 days to file your petition and that 60 days is counted from the notice of the denial of the motion for reconsideration. Very clear yan under your Rule 65, Section 4. So here is a summary of the difference between Rule 64 and Rule 65. Let's go now to application. This is 2011 bar question number 26 MCQ. What is the proper remedy if you want to secure relief from the final resolutions of the COA? Choices are letter A, petition for review on certiorari with the Supreme Court. Letter B, special civil action of certiorari with the Court of Appeals. Letter C, is a special civil action of certiorari with the Supreme Court. And letter D, is appeal to the Court of Appeals. Answer is letter C. Another bar exam question, 2012, 2011 rather, number 57 MCQ. The decisions of the COMELEC or the COA may be challenged by letter A, petition for review on certiorari filed with the Supreme Court under Rule 45. Letter B is petition for review on certiorari filed with the Court of Appeals under Rule 42. Letter C is appeal to the Supreme Court under Rule 54. And letter D is a special civil action of certiorari under Rule 65 filed with the Supreme Court. Our answer is letter D. Again, this is a special civil action. It is a special civil action. Sino ang may jurisdiction? Jurisdiction is with the Supreme Court. Exclusive ang jurisdiction ni Supreme Court. And it is a special civil action of certiorari. Certiorari under Rule 65. Again, certiorari under Rule 65. But you will not be applying the rules stated under Rule 65. You will be applying the rules stated under Rule 64. For example, jan yung period. So instead of using the 60-day period, you will be using the 30-day period. But this is, again, I will emphasize, this is a certiorari under Rule 65. 2006, bar question. Explain mode of certiorari as a mode of review of the decisions of the Constitutional Commissions. So pag pinag-uusapan si Constitutional Commissions, Take note ha, tatlo yan. So you do not limit your answer to Rule 64. So the Constitutional Commissions again are your COA, COMELEC, and the Civil Service Commission. So as far as your COA and COMELEC are concerned, again, it is a special civil action for certiorari under Rule 65 and you will be filing it in the Supreme Court. How about the Civil Service Commission? You will be filing it in the Court of Appeals and it is a petition for review under Rule 43. We'll go now to the sections. Under Rule 64, there are nine sections. We start with Section 1, the scope. Again, ang scope niya, very limited ang application in Rule 64 only to those decisions or judgments, final orders, or resolutions issued by the COMELEC and the COA. Section 2 is your mode of review. The mode of review is 
certiorari under Rule 65 and you filed it exclusively in the Supreme Court. Section 3 is about the period. When are you going to file your petition? The period is 30 days from notice of the judgment. And if you're going to file a motion for reconsideration and the same is denied, you have to file your petition within the remaining period, but which will not be less than 5 days. Reckoned from the notice of denial. I relate nyo na yang, but which shall not be less than 5 days to this Rule 12, the Bill of Particulars, parehas yan ng sinusulat, which shall not be less than 5 calendar days in any event. Section 4 is about the docket and other lawful fees. So, wala namang problema dyan sa docket and other lawful fees. So, we're done with Section 1 to Section 4. Section 5 is about the form and contents of petition. So, the petition shall, number 1, be verified. So, ano ba yung verified? Let's go to your Rule 7, that is the parts and contents of a pleading. The general rule is pleadings need not be under oath or verified. That is the general rule. Exception to the rule is when the rules or the law is specifically required. So, your Rule 64 Nire required niya mismo that the petition should be verified. That is why you need to verify your petition. Paano ba nagbe-verify? Simply lang, you just execute an affidavit and under the 1997 Rules of Civil Procedure, this is how you verify your pleading. Just put there that you have read the pleading and that the allegations therein are true and correct based on your personal knowledge or based on authentic records. So that is how you verify a pleading under the 1997 Rules of Civil Procedure. But under the 2019 amendments, may pagbabago ba? Yes, meron ng mga pagbabago at marami. And if I were you, if you will be taking the bar exam this year, please take note of this kasi ito yung mga tinatanong sa bar exam. So, under the 2019 amendments, how do you verify now a pleading? You verify it also by an affidavit of an affiant duly authorized to sign said verification. And if you are acting on behalf of a party, you must have your authorization. And your authorization must be in the form of a secretary certificate or a special power of attorney. And that authorization must be attached to the pleading and it should also allege the following attestations. So if before, dalawa lang yung ia-allege mo, ngayon under the 2019 amendment, there are three. Number one is the allegations therein are true and correct based on personal knowledge or authentic documents. The pleading is not filed to harass, cause unnecessary delay, or needlessly increase the cost of litigation. And number three is the factual allegations have evidentiary support. Take note also that the signature of the affiant shall serve as a certification of the truthfulness of the allegations in the pleading. And if your pleading has no proper verification or it contains a verification that is not based on personal knowledge or authentic documents, ang basis mo ng verification mo is based only on information and belief or knowledge, information and belief, then it shall be treated as an unsigned pleading. So that is how you verify a pleading. Next, aside from being verified, it should be in 18 copies. But relate that to your efficient use of paper rule. Ano ba ang sinasabi ng efficient use of paper rule? If you are going to file it in the Supreme Court, five copies lang. One original which is properly marked and four copies. Unless if, if, unless if it is to the court in bank, in which case you will be adding file or you will be adding 10 additional copies. For your annexes, you need to submit only two sets of annexes. One is attached to the original and an extra copy because the members of the court shall share the extra copies of annexes in the interest of economy of paper. So take note of that, ha? Maraming nagkakamali dyan. 
maraming mga lawyers ang nagkakamali dyan sa efficient use of paper rule. Next, the petition shall also name the aggrieved party as petitioner and the respondents uh, and the commissions as the respondents and the petition shall state the facts with certainty, present the clearly the issues involved, set forth the grounds, and pray for judgment, annulling or modifying the question judgment. It shall also it shall also state the specific material dates showing that it was filed within the period fixed herein. Take note of that specific material dates kasi if you will be practicing later on, yan yung nagpapa-dismiss ng mga cases kasi meron pa rin mangilan-ngilan na mga abogado na nandadaya. Sabihin na natin yung totoo, meron pa rin ibang mga lawyers dyan na sinasabi nila that they received the judgment on this date pero pag tiningnan mo ng maigi, ang registry receipt hindi pala. So, meaning to say the petition was filed out of time. Kaya, very um, crucial yung specific material dates. And also, it must contain a sworn certification against forum shopping. Next, the petition shall be accompanied by clearly legible duplicate original or CTC of the judgment, final order, or resolution, or CTC of such material portions. Ang requirement dito is the attachment or your annexes must be certified through copies because these are coming from quasi-judicial agencies. Paggaling ang mga records from quasi-judicial agencies or quasi-judicial bodies, then the requirement always of the court is they must be certified through copy because there is no way of knowing uh, there, because the Supreme Court has no way of knowing them. Kaya yan pinapa-certify. Last is the proof of service of a copy of the commission concerned and on the adverse party and of the timely payment of docket and other lawful fees. Take note here that the findings of fact of the commission, if supported by substantial evidence, shall be final and non-reviewable. Relate that to your Rule 43, Section 10. Ano ang sinasabi dyan? It also talks about quasi-judicial agencies. The findings of fact of the court or agency concerned when supported by substantial evidence, shall be binding on the Court of Appeals. And if there is a failure on the part of the petitioner to comply with any of the foregoing requirements, then it will be a sufficient ground for the dismissal of the petition. Section 6 is about the order to comment if the, if the Supreme Court finds the petition sufficient in form and substance, then it shall order the respondents to file their comments on the petition within 10 days from notice. Otherwise, the court may dismiss the petition outright. So take note ha, that before you can file your comment, there must be first an order coming from the Supreme Court. The court may also dismiss the petition if it was filed manifestly for delay or the questions raised are too unsubstantial to warrant further proceedings. You relate this one if you are going to read your Rule 42, that is your petition for review from the RTC to the CA, ano ang sinasabi dyan? It can dismiss the petition if it is prosecuted manifestly for delay or that the questions raised therein are too unsubstantial are too unsubstantial to require consideration. So, parehas yan. Rule 43, ano ang sinasabi ni Rule 43? Appeals from the Court of Tax Appeals and Quasi-Judicial Agencies to the CA. It can dismiss the petition if it is if it is prosecuted manifestly for delay or that the questions raised therein are too unsubstantial to require consideration. You go to your Rule 45 and that is the same. Same on ground. You can deny the petition on the ground that it is prosecuted manifestly for delay or the questions raised therein are too unsubstantial, are too unsubstantial to require consideration. And if you go to your Rule 65, the court may dismiss the petition if it is prosecuted manifestly for delay 
or the questions raised therein are too unsubstantial to require consideration. So you really relate that if you can memorize it better para yan ang makita sa inyo ng examiner. Section 7 is about the comments of respondents. Again, take note that you will not be filing it in 18 copies. Please observe the efficient use of paper rule. Section 8 is about the effect of filing. So what happens if you are going to file a petition for certiorari? It will not stay the execution of the judgment. Again, it will not stay the execution of the judgment. So if you want to prevent the execution of the judgment, what are you going to do? The petitioner should obtain a temporary restraining order or a writ of preliminary injunction because again even if you are going to file your petition for certiorari still it will not stay the execution relate that also to your rule 43 appeals from the cta and quasi judicial agencies to the court of appeals if you are going to file your appeal that is under section 12 the result is the same. The appeal shall not stay the award, the judgment, final order, or resolution sought to be reviewed. But try to distinguish it from your Rule 42. Ano ang sinasabi ni Rule 42? If you are going to perfect your appeal, the appeal shall stay the judgment or final order unless the CA, the law, or this rule shall provide otherwise. So, magkaiba sila. So, ano ang napansin nyo? If the decisions are decisions of quasi-judicial agencies, such as here in your Rule 43 and in your Rule 64, and you are going to file your appeal or you are going to file your petition for certiorari, the effect is it will not stay the execution of the judgment. Last section is your section 9, Submission for Decision. The case will be submitted for decision upon the filing of the comments of the petition or such other pleadings or papers as may be required or allowed. Unless, unless the court sets the case for oral argument or requires the parties to submit memoranda. So this is the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.